If you're new and you want to follow along for more, like, sub, bell. Hello, hello, this is Puddle. Welcome back. I'm, I'm just going to show you some basic stuff based on my setup so far. There are tons of things that you can do. Just by typing a forward slash, you have access to a bunch of the ways that the block that is this little section of text that you just made, this block can be anything you want. Bullet lists. I like doing toggles. So what I'll do is I'll make a bunch of stuff. Like, for instance, here's a call. It's a little section that you can give an emoji. All dogs are very good. But I didn't always want to see this. I could actually drag it right into this toggle. Click for a surprise. And now any kind of block can go into this toggle. Any kind. But outside of those embed options, you can also put in uh, databases. If you click full page, it will make that board or table or gallery its own entire page. But if you click inline, it will make it and then put it within the page that you're currently in. So if I say table, it has created a table. This table is technically its own page. You can open it as a page, but it is hosted within the page that we are currently in. So by doing this, you can end up with certain views. Like for instance, I have a project database and inside my project database is living with the monster. And then inside living with the monster is my episodes with another database. So you can see I have databases in line inside of other pages. At any point, just forward slash, play with each of these, understand what they do for you. If you want to at any point stay in a quote or stay in a call out and hit enter, you just hold shift. So shift enter and you can go and also birds. See? So that's standard for a lot of uh, text editors is the enter making a new like line of paragraph text, but a shift enter just being a line break. So you can also, if you ever wanted to, for instance, this is text, do a thing, learn a do, sing a song. I can take all of this text, highlight it, right click and turn it into a to-do list. You can turn it into just by right clicking. You can turn it into a bulleted list. Like at any point also, you can mess with the color settings. And a fun little trick that I have is like, say if you want to do staggered colors of like pink, white, pink, control shift H will actually switch and toggle between two different text settings. Ba, ba, beep, beep. And if I highlight this, highlight this block, I could change the color through here manually, or I could hit Control Shift H and it will do, it'll toggle between white and pink in this case. So what I like doing is I like making toggles and going to color and giving them a background because then everything inside also gets a background. It's just about experimenting and seeing what stuff works for you and your tables and your pages. Sometimes you don't need to color everything. Sometimes you can't resist. So, you know, we're all different. Now you can also link to pages. So kind of telling, but here's a link to my songbook. So whenever I'm in this page, now I can get a quick link to my songbook. You can do that with any page, links to a page. It's kind of like having your own little Wikipedia, you know? You can just mention things and have it linked to the spot. So this is really good for stuff like life dashes and shortcut menus. Control Shift L, watch your eyes. There is a light theme for Notion too. Looks just as minimal, but I prefer the dark theme because my eyes are constantly in pain and I need a darker theme. Get in there. Yeah. And you know what? Instead of putting songbook in here, I'm going to show you, you can actually hold things at the end of a line here or the beginning of a line and you can put it before or after. And you can do this to get multiple columns of text going. So I can even put it like that. And then if you hover in between, there's these little placers that you can change the width of each section. Moving on, I want to talk about databases. <laughs> there are tons of different types of databases you can put in Notion, but what I think is really cool is say that you make, let's make a fictional project, you know? We're going to call it Chumby. By default, we have two different uh, columns here. We can click on plus and add more columns. There are tons of columns. You can also change what a column is long after doing it. But say, let's make a number column episode and you can just slide it over. So a five episode story, Chumby eats a zoo. Chumby is one with you. Five episodes. You can do a tag section. You can have this tag be based on uh, how far along you are, for instance, writing phase. Okay, so I made a bunch of options. If you want to, you can go in and change the color of these too. You can set it specifically for multi-select tags or single select tag. You know, for the sake of this, we'll put it on single. There it is. Let's say episode one has been released. Episode two has been released. Episode three is on uh, line art. Episode four is on sketching and episode five is on writing. Now you have an immediate list of all your episodes where they're at, but maybe this isn't the view that you want for this project. 
you can add a view and still keep your table. You can keep the table that you made, but you can translate it to something like a Kanban board. So I'm gonna name it board, click on board, click create. I usually hide the first thing that says no tags because it pulls things over. Uh, I usually click hide on that one and, and see this view actually allows you to see in a to-do list style, kind of like having a bunch of post-its up in front of your face about your project. It gives you another way to organize it and it doesn't get rid of your other way to see it. You can always switch between them and you can make as many as you want too. What I like to do sometimes is I'll have my table, my default view, and then I'll make another view of another version of the table because filters are cool. So I want to show you those filtered table with this this little this little meatball menu and we go to filter and now you can add a filter so let's say that this is your work in progress board instead of your full episode board well if the tag is not released i want to see it because that's what i'm working on so now i'm gonna click again on filter table click my little meatballs change the name whips Episode's still in progress, you know, like working on it still. So I already have the other ones done. I have them sorted differently. In this case, it's not going in numerical. It's going by a uh, process. So if you also want to fix that for this view, because I would personally like it to be by number still, you can also go into sort and give this specific view a sorting option too. So sort by number ascending. So now this will always be in order by your numbers but it will be sort filtered for what is a work in progress. But if you ever want to, you can go back to the default view and see just as you had it without losing anything. So what's really cool about the databases is you can choose different views for a single database, and then you can put those views in different spots. Chumby is in line. This page exists with an untitled. So I'm gonna say, this is the Chumby project. Chumby exists within the Chumby project. So the Chumby project has the episodes. So we'll put Chumby episodes. Let's also make a database for chumby characters, right? Because we want to fill out our little character bios and have those ready and on, on hand. So chumby characters. Probably shouldn't even be repeatedly calling them chumby in the meeting. It's redundant. I'm so sorry that I'm like this. But that's what's cool about Notion. You can just change this stuff whenever. So let's make a character section. Personally, I love the gallery view. But you can do it as a table or anything because, like I said, you can change anything. By default, it's going to give you these. I usually just... The big man Chumby himself. And Chumby, we can give this a tag because they by default come with tags, but you could also get rid of the tag or make it something else. We can also put in the episode number that they appear. So instead of tags, we just you can click on it, change anything. Appears in and Chumby appears in good old episode one. That's his first appearance. You can add properties through the menu of having a page up. And that will also update in, because like this is a gallery, but if I were to change the view of it to a table, you can more clearly see we have our other stats here. So you, just like you can add them over here, you can add them inside of a page and it adds it for everybody. Now we don't actually need all these right now, and if we wanted to, we could even hide them from this page, but keep them in the table, which is super helpful. But right now we don't need this many for the sake of what I'm doing. Midway shout out to all the stars in my patron constellation, by the way, and viewers like you. Thank you. And if you're new, hi, I got tons of videos and a mailing list with all of my projects. But right now you're here for this. So let's get back to it. I went over this already in my notion as a powerhouse video of what I'm really using everything for, but I'm really going to focus in on how I use it for living with a monster here to show you. I have this character view just set up for galleries, just so you really get what I'm doing here. Like I also have a coven view here too for the characters that were in the coven, but that's early story stuff. Um, but gallery view has all my characters with like a quick reference on how I like to draw them and what I'm using them for. So all that this is, is I added a header up here. I typed in Nicole's name and I gave her tags. She's in the coven and she's also considered a classmate because I have all of her classmates tagged. I originally wanted to do a lot of things with my character bio pages, but I got too busy literally working on the project, which is a good place to be. So I put her introduce date down here, actually, instead of giving it a table section. I put her date of birth. I have her details about her username. This is this little box here is literally a slash code box. So you can do a code snippet and you can change what type of code it is. But if you're not coding, I'm going to be honest, sometimes it's just aesthetic <laughs> to have a, a different box with a different text type. Um, this is just a call-out box, but I changed the background color to yellow. 
And like I said, you can choose emojis for these. You can also upload images for them. You totally can do that um, and use direct image links. But I tend to just use emojis because they're quick. What I'm doing for like the chumby character thing is just a character grid. And you can assign whatever the first image is to be the image for the gallery. You can reposition them to slide them up and down go into the properties using this meatball menu up here and go down to properties. And when you're in gallery view, you can have a properties menu where you can change specifically if the card preview, that is the image of the gallery is going to be the header of that page, which I just use that squiggly notebook pattern, or if it's going to be the first image in the page, I have it for first image in the page. So that's page content. You can also change the card size. You can make them much bigger. Fit image actually pulls them out, but I don't really like that. And you can actually set how many you want of the gallery to load if you have a lot of things, but you don't want all of them loading, you know? You can also turn on certain settings underneath for it to be accessible, like keeping the characters' names underneath. But at the end of the day, this gallery view is just gallery views. They're tables, they're databases. It's all the same. It's just databases and putting databases inside of pages. They're small spoilers for episode six of Living with a Monster. I have in my complete list of things in how I am organizing my episodes, I have the episode and day number because Nicole counts the dates in the beginning. I have the date I released the episode, the age Nicole was in that episode because I have Nicole constantly aging throughout the story, characters that are listed in the episode so I can keep track of how many episodes had Emily in them, how many episodes had Marigold or Abigail, whether or not the episode has a chat log, the date in the episode because I'm keeping track of that for my story, but of course you don't have to do that for yours. Any specific notes from the mind dump of my project that I want to sum up the episode by, whether or not I have it released, whether or not I have it scripted. So as you could guess, that released thing, I have a view here where I can just, oop, gonna wanna censor that. Um, this is all the episodes I still have to do. And we're back to Chumby. <laughs> So we have our characters, Chumbi's best friend, Chimb, Chimbo, they're, they're best friends. And literally whatever image you put in here will be the icon for the character menu. Or if you wanted to, you could even click up here where you would add an icon. You can also add a cover and the cover menu. You can use a couple presets. You can upload your own image. You can link to a direct image and it also has an unsplash thing. So I'm going to search monkey. There we go. That's Chimbo. And say I wanted that, that f for some reason, I wanted that header to be the thing that loads in this gallery. I would just go to properties, change the card preview to page cover. There's Chimbo. <laughs> so I showed you how to do a character list database. We have an episode list database. And inside of the episode list, say you went inside of an episode and you want to script your episode. I typically, for a living with a monster, like I just showed you, I just type everything out in callouts or I type everything out in plain text or I'll type things out in quote sections to split up the episode. And I don't do this myself, but I think it's really cool and I've seen people do it before, is where they will put a table inside of an episode. And instead of using name and tags, tags becomes... Just select name, pull it over, hear me out. I know this is silly. Another section for dialogue. Do you see where I'm going with this? And then this section that we started with that says name is just the title of the line. So line number, we have a name and we'll say Chumbo is a character. Chimbo is a character or not Chumbo, it's Chumbi. Chumbi and Chimbo. So you can go in and fix anything at any time. By making mistakes, I can show you exactly how to fix them. So say Chumbi and Chumbo are having a conversation and Chumbi's like, hey, what's good? Nothing. I'm using my arrow keys right now. I will copy sections and I will go down and hit paste. So nothing, nothing. Aw, oh, Chimbo. And as you can see, you can have your characters go through lines and say if you wanted to just have certain lines, go to someone that would say voice acting for Chumbi or Chimbo, you could go in, you can make a different view, you could filter right now to only show me, please only show me my Chumbi lines. And now I have those without their context. Some people like to give the whole script for a project. Some people know the project is way too big and you only need to give them a little bit. 
And under different sections, you could even have actions with the line or voice direction or vocal coaching stuff. Like you can do a lot of cool stuff and then you can just export it as a PDF and send it over to them. And say we have like a specific format for how we are making projects. You can also, as you may have seen with my video scripts that I did in my uh, Notion is a Powerhouse video, I have one for my video scripts. So that loads a bunch of callouts and I just type the blah blah words. And now I have my structure for my video. What about before that? Say you have a bunch of loose leaf notes for Chumbi, but you don't know how you want to structure it into the greater story yet, because let's be real, this stuff is great, but it comes later. You know, early development of a project is fun, loose leaf notes. You could just put loose leaf notes and hide them inside of a toggle. You could definitely do that. Uh, control I on stuff will italicize it. Control Shift S will strike it out. Control B bolds, you know, it's, it's, those still apply. So if you already know those, you already got your foot in the door. You could just put them inside of a toggle like this. But what I actually really like to do is I like to make a new page again. You just make a list. A list is a table is a database is a calendar is a gallery. It's all the same. But if you put it in list view ideas. Uh, Chumbi is actually God. That, that's one of my ideas. You know, it's, I haven't put it into the story yet, but I'm, I'm pretty sure Chumbi's actually God. And see, you may have seen like Chumbi project is over here, but I also have, I accidentally put ideas in here. It's not in Chumbi. You can just drag it in, drag things into different pages. And now see, I don't need this page anymore. Delete. So you can move any of these pages anywhere. It's, it's up to you. The world is your oyster. Notion is your oyster. Once you get past that initial learning curve and you fiddle with it, you'll understand the language of the program. So you pull all those things out of their individual page that it created, if it created one, and you can just put them together in a view like this. So we don't want to do sh secrets and loose leaf notes because we have an ideas list now. And in here I have like all of my ideas, all the things that are like, this is it. This is why Chumbi is actually Chimbo. I have all my ideas in here and they're secrets. And you can tag them if you wanted to still. And you can see actually the difference between an empty page and a page you have lines in it. So it can actually show you, oh yeah, I have actually developed this. I haven't just slapped the name in there. Chumbi is gay. Good for you, Chumbi. But say this is secrets. You don't want someone to see your secrets. You pull it into the secret menu and now you can just toggle that open and closed. So now if you're showing your notion board to someone, they can't immediately find out that Chimbo is Chumbi from the future and Chumbi's gay. They, they don't, they don't want to know that yet. Cause that's spoilers. You're going to reveal that. What started as a bunch of little hodgepodge pieces became a dashboard and that applies to lots of stuff. Like I mentioned in my other video, you can look at all of the things I use notion for. I use it as lots of stuff and I, you can go check that out if you want to. I really, really get into it there. As long as you know how to add text, how to mess with text how to toggle blocks, which is this thing, turn into and just make it other stuff. And you can drag them around and you can drag them next to each other. As long as you learn how to do this stuff and you learn how to make a database, change the views of the database, change the filters and the properties and the sorting orders. Once you figure out this stuff, the program kind of opens up. And if you look at what other people are doing, if you look at other inspiration, if you search Notion here on YouTube or anywhere else, you can find like even Facebook groups of how people use and organize their Notion dashes. And I think it's really cool. So I hope all of my babbling helped someone. I hope it helped you. If it did, please leave a like and a comment. And if you like this and you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Thanks for listening. Take care. And I will see you next week.